Good morning, class, and welcome to a very special installment of Viking Guitar University. As always, I am your esteemed instructor, Dr. Viking Guitar, and you can't see it, but right now, as I sit here, I am holding an Ibanez RGA7 7-string electric guitar. This thing is loaded with a couple of DiMarzio pickups, and uh, none of that means anything to you if you're not a guitarist, but the point is, is today we are going to do a full rundown of pretty much everything we've already covered in these videos. Now, it's not going to include any uh, mixing stuff, or maybe just a little bit, panning, volume, maybe a few little things like that, but the more important thing is, is I'm going to take you through the process I use when I write and record a song. Now, this is going to be a little simplified in that it's not going to account for the hours and hours and hours I spend fine-tuning everything and writing riffs and, you know, just doing all that stuff, but it's going to be fairly representative, um, in a nutshell, of what I do when I set out to create a new track for either um, my Eye of Eye thrash death metal project or um, my Viking guitar music. So, without further, uh, further ado, I can't even talk, I'm so excited. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to start by opening up Reaper, and this is a brand new Reaper project file. Now, um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to, this is going to have some, some guitar, some bass, some drums, and all that jazz. Um, not jazz, actually, metal. All that metal. So we're going to start, and right off the bat, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a track by double-clicking here, and I'm just going to walk you through all this stuff, explain all of it. Um, we're going to label this drums. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the effects here, and we're going to add our drum kit. And what I am using today is uh, Easy Drummer. Now, this isn't, uh, like I said in, in past videos, this isn't the most advanced drum kit, but I, I really like it for a lot of reasons. Um, we're going to wait for it to load up the kit, and we're not going to bother changing any of the kit samples here today or loading the more robust drum kit from Hell Expansion. All we're going to be doing is we're working with basic Easy Drummer. Um, so we're going to start, and we've got that. We're going to create a track that we're going to label Rhythm Guitar Left, another one labeled Rhythm Guitar Right, one labeled Bass, one labeled Lead Guitar. Now, um, we've got all these set up. Um, what we're probably going to be doing before anything else is I've already come up with the basic riff that we're going to use for this song, um, and we've got to set the tempo, so it's... Let's make it 160. That seems to be what it's close at. So to do that, I just click on the tap to, um, you know, in tempo to set the tap, and then I click down here and type in the time I want. So let's uh, turn on snapping. Let's... Where's the metronome? Here it is. We'll shift this over. I'm not used to seeing that much of it. There we go. Metronome. We'll right-click on it, turn it up to about 12, because that's what I like, and let's listen to this tempo to see if this is what we want. That sounds good. So... There's two ways to go about it at this point. One is to just jump in and start recording your first guitar line or bass line. Um, let's, uh, let's do a drum pattern here. And let me just play the riff for you first. Um, what I'm going to do is open up my PodFarm software, which is what I'm using today to record this lead guitar line. And it's not going to be... The song isn't going to be anything super exciting, but this is just a, um, a metal preset I have for rhythm guitar. <laughs> Not uh, super high tech, um, but before we do that, we're going to turn on the tuner and just make sure this is more or less in tune. Do this every time you record. Even if it's between takes, just double check the tuning. So. There we go. That's more or less in tune. So now we go back to this. I'm going to minimize this because this is the metal sound we want. And here's what the, the riff sounds like that I have. It's... So it's kind of this six count thing uh, with a four and a two or something like that. But we're going to go over and, as I've said in uh, prior videos, I usually start my songs around the uh, the third bar because that gives me enough time to do some editing on the front end if I want to. Plus, it gives me my count in time without using the count in before playback or record thing that Reaper has. I'm not too fond of that. So I'm going to insert a new MIDI item. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to load my custom note names which lets me see what these instruments are over here. And we're going to start with this first pattern. And for this, I kind of want it to mirror what uh, what the guitar is doing, but I still want to have it and have that kind of kick-snare feel to it. So we're going to... There we 
we go. And now we'll uh, we'll slot, adjust the velocity of these. So we want a heavy hit on the first one, and then the rest of these we'll set around this range just so that first one really stands out when we're doing it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to add our snare hits. And we want our snare, snare hits to be full volume, and we'll just add them on every upbeat. So it's... There we go. And we want to have it start with a crash. And I usually do both left and right crashes for a big hit like that. There we go. And then uh, for the rest of the hi-hat crash section throughout this, we're just going to keep this crash going at every beat. But we're going to lower the velocity just so it's obvious where the big one is. One thing I didn't talk about in the MIDI video is if we want to make this segment longer, um, we can either add a second one here and then glue them together, or what we can do is just open this first one, and if we click at the edge here, we can drag it out to be as long as we want it. Now, what it does initially is it increases the length of it, but it sets this part here, which repeats the first part, so we just drag this bar out, and then we move it over. So now we have this whole one, two, three, four, five, six beat segment that we can do. So it's dun 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 something like that. What is the riff again? Let me play it again. There we go. There we go. And we'll adjust these notes to match the other kick ones. And I'm getting a bit of a bit of clip right now or a bit of stuttering because I'm running my screen capture software at the same time. But we'll copy these. We'll put them there. And so it's There we go. Now what we'll do is we'll copy this, we'll paste it over here. For the second iteration, we're not going to have that big crash at the beginning. So we have two cycles of that, then we'll copy it, paste it again, and it sounds like this. And let's have one more segment of that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to bar two, so we get a four count, and I'm just going to play along with this on guitar. I'm not going to record anything, just to kind of see how it sounds and if it's doing what I want it to do. Go. And I have a slight little change in this last one. And it goes dun, 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 dun. So we'll increase the length of it, move that over. And we'll just do this guy, then we'll add this guy here, and two kick tracks. So there we go. And that's our first segment. Now we're going to get into a second segment, but for the sake of ease, I'm not going to do that yet. Um, also to kind of demonstrate a thing. So what we've done is we've set up a drum line here to our rhythm guitar. So now what we're going to do is, um, just to make this easy, because I'm having memory problems, I'm going to right click on this, I'm going to go to render freeze track, and I'm going to freeze track to stereo. Basically what this is going to do is this is going to turn this into an audio track so it's not running that, uh, that drum software real time, and that's going to make it so I get less stuttering with my processor. And now, piece of cake. So what we do is we go back to the beginning, we arm the first track for rhythm guitar left, and uh, we're going to hit record, and I'm going to record this first line. So here we go. There we go. And uh, it sounds pretty good. I made a mistake at the end, and let's listen to it isolated. It's supposed to be different chords there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back, 
We're just going to clean up that segment. We're going to find a good place to start. So. So if we start here. So just remember where it's going to be. It's going to start the. So I'm going to hit record. And I'm going to start playing um, after falling along in my mind, and then we're going to splice the two. So. There we go. So now that I've got these two, two takes here, what I'm going to do is splice between them. So I just zoom in on it. And uh, with the distorted guitar tracks, it's kind of hard to see exactly where they line up because there's so much distortion, but I'm just going to listen. This is really where the problem area is. So I'm going to go to about here, splice between the two of them and see how that sounds. There we go. We'll cut off this last little bit there, and that, delete those. With these, um, once again, since I started recording here, I created an audio split here, and there's a little click. In fact, we can hear that click if we go here. Hear that? We don't want that. So to clean that up, zoom in, drag these crossfade parts over. We do want the crossfade between these two parts because I think it helps smooth the transition. And we're going to click on that guy, hold shift and click all the way over there, right click, go to glue items. So now we have one audio line for the guitar and that's our guitar left. So with drums. This is a bit louder than I want, so um, we'll deal with that in a minute. First off, since this is audio guitar left, one thing I like to do with my rhythm guitars is uh, double track them. I have one pretty extreme panned left, one pretty extreme panned right. So we're going to take this pan and drop it all the way down to, let's say, 83% left. And then while we're doing that, we might as well take a look at rhythm guitar right here and set that to 83% right. Now, one thing is you might notice it's kind of hard to specifically get to numbers um, dragging it because it goes so quickly. If you hold control while you click and drag, it'll slow down the speed that you can do this stuff at. So we've got 83% left, 83% right. And as I said, the guitar was a little loud, and it's only going to get louder with another one here. But instead of um, instead of adjusting the individual volume tracks, because I want them to stay the same, we're going to insert a new track, drag it up top here on both of them, make it a folder track, go down to the last track in the folder, and click that to end the folder track. We're going to call this Guitar Folder. And now I'm just going to right-click on the volume here, and I'm going to set it to maybe minus 2.5. That's just enough to take the edge off. Now I unarm the guitar left track. We'll minimize it because I don't need to look at it. Arm the right one. And we're going to go back to the beginning, turn the metronome back on, and record this one. And hopefully it will be an exact duplicate, assuming I don't screw it up. Now we stop it, save it, and now we unarm it, let's turn off the metronome, and let's listen to uh, both of them together. There we go. Now, you might notice at the end here, the right guitar track carries on a bit longer than the left. That doesn't really matter because we're going to be recording a new segment over that part anyway. So now that we've got that done, um, we're going to turn over to the bass. So bear with me while I unplug the guitar, switch to the bass. Now that we've got the bass, we're going to go over and we're going to switch to my bass preset that I like. Now we're going to tune this. This is a five string bass, a Dean Edge Q5, which is a kind of a budget instrument, but definitely nice. I don't even know why I'm tuning that string. I'm not going to use that string. Sounds nice and fat. 
So we're going to minimize that. We go back here. We set it to record. And mind you, for all this stuff, I've already set it up so that it's reading from uh, ACO from the tone port UX2. And uh, all of these are set to send one, which if we look at the tone port is going to be the process sound, not the dry input. So we turn the metronome back on. The bass is armed. Everything else is unarmed. We go back to the beginning. Let me play the bass real quick, just to make sure I can do it. And I'm playing with a pick because I'm not as accomplished a bassist as pretty much anyone else out in the world. Now we're going to record our bass line. Now we stop it, we save it, let's turn off the metronome and let's listen to this. One other thing I haven't mentioned before is if we go to options here, there's an option called solo in front. And this is kind of cool when you don't want to fully solo a track to listen to it. You still want the other stuff to bleed through a bit. Um, this just makes it uh, like this. So you play it and then you solo a track. And it doesn't fully mute the other ones. It just mostly mutes them. So it brings this to the front without silencing the rest. So that's sounding pretty good. Let's unplug the bass, plug back in the guitar, and then we'll record our lead. All right, we've got our seven string plug back in. And for the lead, I'm going to use this patch called Archangel. And uh, by default, this comes with delay on. But we don't want that delay on because we want to be able to add the delay later. That way, if I'm recording, if I stop recording in the middle, I won't be cutting off any delay. The one other thing we're going to do is adjust our noise gate a bit here. So now we turn off the armed bass track, we arm the lead track, and then we turn the metronome back on, start at the beginning, and then we record our lead. And we're only going to record lead over the second half of this, so let's start it playing and we'll see how it goes. We stop it, save it. Let's listen through it here, see how it sounds. We'll start in the middle. So once again, nothing super impressive, but it does the job. Now, uh, one thing I've noticed is the lead's a bit louder than I want, so we're going to turn it down probably about, oh... Let's just right click. Let's set it to minus 2.5. That's a good number. And what we're also going to do is we're going to go into the effects here. We're going to add some chorus because I like the sound of chorus on guitar. We're going to use this preset called lead guitar chorus. Duh. Uh, turn the mix down a bit because I don't like quite that much. We're going to listen, solo it, and listen to it without the chorus and then with. There we go. And one other thing I've noticed is there's this little click. That little string noise at the beginning, we don't want that. So we're going to go into about here, split it with the S button, click delete. Now we have it without that. There we go. And we're also going to add a delay. And uh, both of these effects you can uh, download from the link. It should be showing on the screen right now, and it's also in the video description. They are free to download and fairly nice effects, so I recommend it. So we're going to go to our delay here. Um, we're going to just change some of the settings. We're going to turn the mix down a little bit, turn this up a bit, change it to ping pong, which means it bounces back and forth, left and right stereo. Uh, we're going to set this to tape. We're going to turn down the quality of the tape echo so it gives it this kind of cool sound. We'll listen to it at the end. There we go. Analog is what I wanted. 
And we're going to set the time instead of uh, one quarter beat to three eighths, which just gives it a bit of a different timing thing. And now we'll unsolo it and listen to the full thing from the beginning. Not bad. Not bad for uh, just about 20 minutes of work where I'm showing you everything. Now, let's say that this isn't enough for us. Let's say that we want more. We want to add a second section to this. And honestly, this is the way I do a lot of my recording is I'll record it section by section. And then uh, if I'm feeling up to it, I'll go back and record it all the way through from the beginning. But um, I kind of like to, when I'm writing my songs, think about, okay, so this song, this part just ended. What would I want it to do now? And uh, then I start writing out riffs and I've already come up with a riff actually. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by unfreezing this drum line because we're going to add more drum stuff. So we right click, we go to render freeze tracks, unfreeze. So now that we've unfrozen the drum track, we can go in and we can add more patterns to it. So we're going to click at the end, we're going to go to insert new MIDI item, and we're going to add a drum pattern. And I want to give it this sort of halftime feel. So before we had the snare on every second and fourth beat, now we're going to do it just on the third beat here. So we're going to go like that. We're going to change the velocity. Oh, Lord. Having trouble. We're going to change the velocity on these two down a bit. Um, we're going to put a crash at the beginning because I'm being predictable. We're going to increase the velocity of those. We're going to add this pedal thing, um, this uh, hat thing. So we're just going to add that at every other space there. We're going to change this so it follows this kind of more realistic pattern. And we're going to stretch this out so it covers another two. Oop, there we go. And we'll drag this guy over. And you know what? We might as well just make this whole thing bigger because we're going to use it. So it's dun 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 is what we want. And then we want to copy this pattern and just paste it and paste it. And so the whole, oop, we want to move these over to the right place. So the whole thing sounds. <laughs> go. Now we'll copy it. We'll paste a new iteration, but on the second one, we're just going to have a hat to start with, not the full symbol thing. And then we're going to do two more segments of that. And then add a little, little build in at the end to go back into the main riff. It's going to be the same building we used on the last one because I, I don't want to think too much about this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy this part again and put it at the end. And then to finish it off, we're going to add one more MIDI track here. And we're just going to have it be a kick drum hitting super hard with both crashes. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to freeze this again to prevent any memory trouble. And it takes a bit longer to freeze it this time because of that stuff. So, cool. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to record the rest of this left for the guitar line. And we'll pick a good place to start where... There we go. We'll start at this point. And I hit Alt-S there to turn snapping back on. So it starts at the point where the left guitar is doing... And what we're going to do is go into Pod Farm here. We're going to go back to our metal sound. Metal. There we go. We go in, we unsolo it. This one's armed for recording. And we're going to hit record, we're going to start going, and then jump in at a point that's good, and then we're going to play the rest of this whole song.
There we go. So we stop it, we save it. Now we go over to this part and we're going to trim it at the proper place, somewhere in the middle. There's a good spot. We'll turn off snapping so we can finitely do it. Uh, we can see the dip there, so we'll just do it there for the sake of argument. We'll go over to this part, get rid of the crossfade, and then select it all, glue it, and now we should be done with that guitar. Unarm it, arm this one, and now we'll record the rest for the right guitar. Stop it, save it. Then we're going to go over and splice it. And we'll splice it, well, let's say right about there. S, click that guy, so it selects that. Go over here, get rid of the crossfade issue. And we'll actually do that here too. I should have done that on the last one, but I forgot. Not the end of the world. Now we right click, glue it all. Now, since we're done with the guitar at this point, what we can do is cut off the beginning and the end. Like here, we've got some incidental string noise we don't want. So just go in there, hit S, hit S up here, where after they fade it out, get rid of that. We're going to go back and do it at the beginning too, where we can just cut this guy there, and we'll cut this guy here and then do a fade in because I, it's going to sound more natural sounding with that weird noise at the beginning. All right, now we can record our bass for the rest of this. So bear with me while I switch instruments. Okay, we've swapped. Open up Pod Farm once again. Make sure the tuning is more or less okay. There we go. And I know the rest of it is tuned to that, so we'll minimize it. Arm our bass track. Go somewhere over here to where we're going to record. Make sure everything else is unarmed. The metronome is still on. All that, and we're going to start recording. <laughs> Stop it, save it, splice it. We're gonna go down. The bass, it's a bit easier to see where the actual beats are, so we'll go here where it does that big dun dun beforehand. We'll cut it right about there, select the first one, go over here, get rid of the crossfade issue, and do the same thing over here. And now we have a uh, almost finalized bass track. Let's go and clip off the ends because we don't need them. And all it will do is cause trouble. There we go. We got rid of that part too. And now the whole thing sounds like this. Pretty good. The one thing I think it's missing is a little bit of lead over the last part, so just bear with me and we'll add that. So now that we've got the seven string plugged in, what we are going to do is we're going to unarm the bass. We're going to go down and we're going to create a new lead guitar track because I'm using a different patch now. Lead guitar two, we'll call it. And uh, this patch is a different one I have. And uh, we're just going to arm it, turn the metronome back on, change the noise gate on this a bit because I'm getting some buzz. And we're going to record this part now. We 
stop it, save it, and we're going to cut off the beginning, delete, we're going to cut off the end, and I've got a bit of incidental string noise at the end of the bend here, we don't want, and what we are also going to do is, um, because I want these same effects from this one, we're going to create a new track that we are going to call lead guitar folder. We're going to move this up top of these two lead guitar tracks, create a folder track, tell this to end the folder track, cut all these effects off of the original lead guitar line there, and we are going to put it on the folder track now. So we're only wanting running one instance. So they're up there, and we're going to delete them off this one. And what we're also going to do is we're going to set the panning on the two lead guitars. So one is a bit right, the other is a bit left. That'll just give it a bit of stereo separation. And now when we listen through from the beginning, our completed song at this point sounds like this. Not bad. So in a nutshell, that's kind of how I do all my recording stuff. Obviously, there's more complexity um, in making a longer song, and we really haven't talked much about mixing outside of doing some volume adjustments and panning adjustment and adding a bit of delay effect. But you get the gist. Um, hopefully this covers um, and solidifies in your mind a lot of the stuff we've gone over with the earlier Reaper tutorials, and hopefully this will get you to a point now where you can actually start doing your own recording and feeling comfortable with it. Now, like I've said in some of the prior videos, this is something you really need to practice. It's just like guitar or playing an instrument or anything. You're only going to get better at this stuff and get more used to it if you spend time doing it. Um, I don't know what your schedule is like, but if you have the ability to record a song a week or two songs a week or even a song a month, that's the only way you're going to get better. And don't worry too much about it not sounding exactly the way you want. You will get better with time. And if you wait to finish a song until you think you're at some imagined optimum place to record one, you're never going to finish a song. Um, the best thing to do with each song that you do is make it as good as you can at the time, but keep in mind that you do have to finish it, and every song is just going to kind of be a snapshot of where you are in your recording abilities at that time. And if you think of it that way, you don't have to worry about, oh, well, I'll put it off until I learn more and until I do more. Just record the damn song. Have fun with it. When you're done with it, save it. We're, uh, we're going to go to Save Project As here, and uh, we're going to go to my Reaper Projects folder. And we're going to call this First Real Song. We're going to create a subdirectory and move all the media into it. And then when you're done with that, just go to File, Render. Render it to, uh, you know, your desktop or wherever and as an MP3 file. And once again, we need that lame encoder from the first video. Click Render. It'll go through. It'll save all this stuff to an MP3. And then what you can do is you can share this with your friends. And it doesn't matter if it sounds as good as you want it to because it's representative of something you created and that's totally freaking awesome. And you're only going to get better each time, even if you make mistakes along the way. So this pretty much concludes the, the whole segment on uh, the functionality of Reaper. Um, there will be more videos as, uh, as I discover new techniques myself and as people ask questions along those lines. If you want to ask me a question, just send me an email or a comment or uh, something like that. And uh, after these, we're going to get into uh, the nuts and bolts of how to do mixing, uh, mixing and mastering, which is taking all these tracks that you've done and really polishing them up so that they shine and it sounds studio grade or as close to it and as awesome as possible. So thank you for attending Viking Guitar University. I'm Viking Guitar, and until next time, keep the world metal.